Hello, dear watch-loving friends, and let's start with some polls for the sake of statistics. Now, raise your hands, don't be afraid to do so, even if you're watching this while on a subway ride or on a bus. Raise your hands, I was saying, if you do not know this watch. I'm pretty sure that 99% of you will have their hands down. And another question for you. Raise your hand if this is the first review of a Casio Marlin that you have seen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that most of your hands were down. Because this might be one of the most reviewed watches on the whole intertube, on the whole Uternet. Yes, I'm talking about the Casio Marlin or Casio Duro. Now, I'm not sure that we can call the new models of this particular watch Casio Marlin anymore and that's because Casio were forced to exclude the Marlin from their dials and also from their back but we're going to get there in just a few seconds because of some copyright issue because the permit for using this image had expired or something like that. Well suffice it to say that the new model of this very beautiful watch does not have a Marlin on its dial instead it has something different written in this part of the dial i really can't remember what is written if just the lettering is bigger or well you tell me in the comments now if you have a look at this watch and at this watch two models of the same exact watch the only thing that changes is the rotating bezel if you have a look at it you will notice that there's something strange going on with the crystal and also that there's something peculiar going on with the strap and I'm going to tell you both of these things in just a second actually I'm going to tell them now I put a protective glass on this crystal and also on the other one I've gotten used to it so I don't even notice the protective glass anymore but you can tell me if you noticed it right away or if you just noticed it when I told you that it was here. Like a dear viewer from the UK pointed out, uh, protective films or glasses in this case are a great way to protect your beloved Casio and even though this is not a Rolex, even though this is not an expensive watch, I still think that this is a, an excellent work of uh, technology and craftsmanship and I like to have it well kept and I like to stay as close to the original as possible during the passing of the years. I'm not one of those people, I don't know about you, who if I have a $20 Casio and I have to change the battery, I change the whole watch. I like to change the battery even if it costs over the long run more than the watch itself. I like to give value to things and this might seem like a contradiction because I have two of the same thing and I don't really need two of these. Actually, I didn't need one in the first place, but look at how beautiful they are. The strap! This is not the original strap. And why, oh why, did I change the strap on this watch? And by the way, the original strap is this one, which I am keeping. It is well made extremely well made I do like it uh, not everybody seemed to like this strap but I do like it and why oh why did I have to change it well because I have a very tiny Disney princess wrist my wrist is 6.5 inches or 16.5 centimeters and well when I strap it on my wrist there's the final part of the strap protruding like a even even if I put it under the loop Still, there's a quite a significant part of the strap protruding and this bothers me in the words of Lieutenant Columbo. But see how well this strap and each part is made. The buckle is made of stainless steel. Overall, it's a good component. Now, what kind of strap did I put? I put a silicone strap on the old black marling and I find this extremely comfortable. It wraps around my wrist really comfortably, just to repeat myself, has this um, steel bucket, double strap loop, 
so I have no problem with it protruding. And more or less the same goes for this watch, only that I think that the strap on this one does not look as good. Uh, you can see that this strap does not taper towards the end, it's straight. Okay. Uh, of course, I like to wear all my watches, so there's a bit of debris. Uh, it has a good uh, buckle. The buckle is made of steel, only that the steel is painted black, but it's not plastic. I can assure you. This is steel, and it's very, very uh, well made. But I do like the look of this one better, and I will put it on my wrist. Oh, by the way, wrist jack? Yeah! The trusty G-Shock, the Solar and Multiband one on which I will make soon a review. This has accompanied me for quite a few years. I wear it very often, in fact it's quite dirty. Review coming soon. What about these beauties? Uh, you wanna know the measurements? Come on. Haven't you seen all the other thousands reviews? Okay, I'll go I'll go there anyway, just, just to measure. 44, 44 mil exactly. Uh, of course, with the crown, it's more than that. 46.2 with the crown. Thickness, have a look at the thickness. 12.6 thickness, but keep in mind that I have the uh, protective glass, so it might be 12.4 or something like that. Lock to lock, very important measurement. Lock to lock, as you can see, is 48.3 okay this is ideal because the watch as everybody will tell you wears smaller than it actually looks and so I think I can pull it off even with my tiny wrist you wanna know about the weight trusty scale from little 99 grams 99 grams. Let's wait the other one. 98. So the strap is a bit lighter because the watches are the same. So we were talking about the marlin and there's this uh, beautiful marlin fish on the dial as you can see. This old black version has the very nice detail of the red the second hand. The second hand as you can see it's the marks quite well for a, what is this, less than $50 watch. The date on the dial is not that visible, but then again, who cares? I mean, you didn't buy this watch for the date. It says Japan movement here, and in fact, the, the analog movement is made in Japan, but of course, the watch is uh, cased in China. And you can see that there is a beautiful marlin on the back too. So on this model, the MDV-106, as you can see here, as you can see here, is the 106. There's still the marlin on the back and on the dial. A stainless steel water resistant 20 bar. This is the module. And what a beautiful watch this is. Wouldn't you agree? Let's have a look at the Starbuck. It's the same exact watch, only that the bezel changes. But I think that this one looks great. Oh, what about the bezel rotation? Now this one rotates quite easily. It has no play whatsoever. It feels really uh, rock solid. It gives you the impression of uh, gives you the sense of quality of much expensive watches. Whereas on this one, which I wear the most, uh, the bezel had some problems at the beginning. I found it very hard to rotate it, but then I put it on something soft like silicon mat or something. I applied a bit of downward pressure for turning and, well, quite counterintuitively, uh, it turned well and now it's turning without any problem. Now, let's let's make another poll. How many of you actually have one of these watches and have gone diving with it? Not me, not me. I 
seldom go diving. I go swimming in the sea or in swimming pools, but not diving. And uh, but they tell me that these watches are excellent diver watches for a ridiculous price. Once again, these go for, I don't know, less than 50 bucks. I'll have to check Amazon or something like that to tell you an exact price, but you can do so. Maybe I'll leave a link in the description if I can. A beautiful watch, of course, the crown is a screw down crown, otherwise it wouldn't be that effective underwater. Uh, it's quite easy to screw up and down, uh, even with, well, cotton gloves like these ones. Don't forget to screw the crown down whenever you adjust the time. And what else can I say about this watch? When, oh yes, I could put it on my wrist. And when you put it on your wrist, it has quite a bit of weight, but it feels so solid. I do like the sense of quality that this watch gives me. And let me show you the watch on my 16.5 centimeters or 6.5 inches wrist. It does look big. It does look big. But you can see that the lug to lug distance is almost exactly the, the width of my wrist. Uh, the strap is very comfortable, as I said. Uh, loops hold the very end of the strap quite well. As you can see, it's not protruding. I, I don't know. I think that really I can pull it off. Maybe I'm the only one noticing that I have a big watch on my wrist. With smart watches getting bigger and bigger these days, I don't think that a watch like this on a wrist like mine sticks out like a sore thumb. I think really I like it a lot and I don't mind. Good sensation of weight on the wrist, uh, super legibility, very, very bad legibility at night or in the dark. The loom on this one doesn't last more than five minutes or so. And I've made a comparison of looms in another video, um, the video about a Citizen Eco Drive, and I'll put the link somewhere, maybe on the screen or maybe in the description. Uh, the loom on this one is very bad, but then again, who cares? You don't buy an F91 for its light and you don't buy a Marlin for its loom, I guess. What else can I say? What else can I say? Nothing. These are beautiful watches that you don't need, that I don't need. And I didn't need to buy two of these. And even though I'm from Europe, I bought it on Amazon US. And with customs expenses and delivery expenses, they were much cheaper than buying them on, on some Amazon in Europe. These are beautiful watches that will last you a lifetime. A lifetime really and they're made of steel and I don't know they're awesome how can Casio afford to make such beautiful watches at such a low price I have some answers in my mind and they make me question my morality for buying two of these or for buying one in the first place yeah if you share these moral concerns with me please do write a comment and we will feel guilty together otherwise what can i say i can say that i will see you on the next of lis learn no i will see you that's my other channel i will see you on the next of wooden i will see you on the next of wooden what you don't need ciao